So I'm, I'm here to talk to you today because I'm at war with the web as it's become, or sometimes I do like to introduce myself as a web 0.9 evangelist or lover. Um, I did love Gopher when I was around. Who of you has used Gopher? My goodness, that's more people than are members of NZOSS. This has to change. <laughs> so, <laughs> How many of you like the experience? The, the Gopher experience. <laughs> no, I, I do. I mean, thank you very much for, uh, for int <laughs> introducing my talk in several ways, because <laughs> when, I, when, I, when I use the web, I, I want inf information. And what it is nowadays, um, is, is a lot of, you know, interaction and a lot of uh, animation and a lot of, well, background noise, background stuff that's happening, which, you know, I'll say a lot of people don't know about, except probably all of you do. And uh, so if at any point in time I'm going too slow or I'm boring you, I'm going to abuse this uh, clicking thing. Yeah, just start clicking if it's boring and then, you know, if the noise level picks up and I can't hear myself talking anymore, then I know that I'm boring the heck out of you, and I don't want to do that. So, without further ado, um, I've set up a little, I don't have any slides, um, I set up a little, um, um, well, set up here on my screen um, at the top left, which I'm going to move down, is the debugger for Firefox. At the bottom, which I'm going to move up, and I'll explain to you why I have to do that, it's my window manager and stuff, whatever. Um, is a web browser, as you know it, and then over here is this wonderful Firefox extension called Lightbeam, which is a visualization of what happens in the background of your browser as you're browsing the web. So bear with me for a second while I load stuff.co.nz. Here we go. Ready? And now I move this down. And here goes stuff. So over here, you should now be seeing, down here uh, in the debugger, you see all the requests happening. Over here in the visualization, you should be seeing all the requests that are coming in. It's a little bit slow right now, but give it time. Check this out. There are all these little things coming to try to meet the website over here. That's stuff.co.nz, the circle in the middle. And just wait, there's a big bang coming. Yeah? There you go, there you go, there you go. All right, all of this is happening. Yeah? The website has loaded, yeah, but you can see that there's still a lot of stuff going on down here, and there's still a, stuff, a lot of stuff going on over here, right? Worse yet, if I go and interact with the website, check out what's happening there. Everybody is being told about this. Martin is scrolling down. Martin is hovering over this button. Martin is looking at the, and you know, there are actually trackers that are analyzing how many seconds I am spending on which part of the page in order to, well, at the end of the day, increase ad revenue. Because that is the problem with the web as we have it nowadays. Somebody, I'm, not, I'm going to try not to name any names tonight, but somebody came up with this idea, it would be fantastic to put ads on the web, and then somebody else came up with the idea um, of making those ads personalized. And then, uh, of course, in order to do that, you had to find out a lot about the people that are using the web. And well, look at this, look at this lattice over here. These are, I don't know how many, or oh, it says somewhere up here, 73 third-party sites that have been contacted just through my loading of the home page, the main page of stuff.co.nz. I can't imagine most people of you will like this. I can't imagine anybody out there likes this, except either nobody knows about it or people have gone to the point of not caring. So in some ways, what I'm here to talk to you about is my ways of dealing with this. And I'm hoping to try to show you a couple of methods that are actually not that hard. You know, they're all like in the advanced Firefox section and, and you have to like sort of understand what a matrix looks like. I mean, with a matrix, I'm talking about a table, yeah? Columns and rows, not, you know, matrix stuff, whatever, right? Just a table, yeah? A lot of people have seen that, but of, of course there is still um, a big gap to bridge, a big um, chasm that we must walk across or jump across um, in order to make it more accessible for everybody out there. And that's sort of one of my main goals in life, I guess, is figuring out what these alternatives are that we can bring to the world to actually help them 
protect themselves and their privacy. So let's have a look. First of all, I wanna, I'm going to sit down if that's all right. Um, I want to have a quick look over here at what, what's been happening. You know, I mean, let, let me just let me just scroll all the way up here. Yeah, this is every single line here is a request, a network request that has happened because I loaded stuff.co.nz. I'm not actually at the top yet. No, no, I'm about one third up. Yeah. Okay. All of this. There you go. How many of those are zero byte images or like one pixel images? Is a whole bunch of very very small. Yeah. Yeah, by all means. I mean, here, here's a 1, 3. There you go. 1.1 1. 1 by 1. No, this is 90 by 60. Yeah, there you go. Tracker. Yeah. There you go. Metrics.brightcuff.com. V2 tracker. Domain video cloud. That's all very important stuff. <laughs> um, it has an image of 1 by 1 pixels. Yep. It took 198 milliseconds to load. Anyway, I'm, I'm still on my way up to the top here. Let's just have a look at one of those requests. Yeah. Let's. Uh, okay. Let's. Let's be fair. Let's. Let's get rid of domain. Um, dot stuff. Dot co. Dot nz. Yeah. That should. That should be pretty much get rid of everything. So now we are only looking at. Bear with me. Now we're only looking at the third party. Yeah. It's much better. Much better. <laughs> much. Much less. There you go. All right. Let's look at one of those. Yeah. Let's look at neighborly. Dot co. Dot nz. What are we doing here? What is our browser doing? And I'm sorry if this is sort of a HTTP 101. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to bore you, and I hope you can actually read what it says down here. Oh, I can make it bigger even. That's awesome. So I'm interested mostly in the request headers that are going on here. So, and, and here is essentially the referrer, which is basically a field wherein my browser tells this neighborly.co.nz site that I was just at stuff.co.nz, or put differently, the guy using this browser coming from this IP address, guy or girl, I'm sorry, uh, using this browser coming from this IP address was just visited, visiting stuff.co.nz before he was sent on to your <laughs> site. And so that's a bit of information there. The other bit of information down here is that I'm using Mozilla 5.0 blah, 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 Firefox 61.0. There's a whole bunch of entropy in that string because very few people actually use, well, unless it's Microsoft Internet Explorer 6, or are we up to 7? I forgot. Um, <laughs> you know, very few people using exactly that Mozilla on Linux running 64 bit blah. Um, so there's a fair bit of entropy going on here. And uh, moreover, there's a whole lot of techniques that, I, that people can use to further identify your browser. And then if they know where you're coming from, and if they know sort of the timing profile and what browser you're using, they actually don't need any cookies anymore to identify you, to track you all across the web. And so everybody who's been like, you know, checking that, unchecking that box, allow third party cookies and now feel safe on the web, I'm sorry to tell you, you're not. So cookies is another thing that's interesting here, of course. Uh, cookie, well, I'm not going to get into that. You guys, you guys all know what, what cookies are, but essentially this, this, I'm sending this. Because the last time I talked to this server, the server told me to send this the next time I come back, just so that they know who they are talking to. So I don't like, I don't like any of this. I don't, I don't like this lattice over here. If you look at this, I really don't like this. I just wanted to read stuff about New Zealand. So let's fight. Let's get rid of this stuff. Well, not stuff, but that sub stuff. And I have a couple of uh, extensions here. I'm not going to be able to walk through all of them today, I'm sure. But I'm going to start at the bottom because this is my favorite. Umatrix came out of uBlock Origin and all these kind of other um, extensions. But I think they've actually taken it to perfection. And now we're back to the matrix. Yeah? And the matrix, remember, it's a table. It has rows and columns. Because what I mean, I'm just going to reload stuff so that the matrix has an idea of what's going on. You can see up here, it's very, very small, but it's counting those, those uh, requests. And actually, you know what? I had it enabled, so that's boring. Let's disable it for now. Let, let it just watch what's happening in the background, and it won't do that, of course, either. But here's the UI, and contrary to all this garbled gook down here, 
you're actually getting some useful information, right? You, are, you have a couple of columns, cookies, CSS, the style sheets, images, media, videos and stuff, scripts, header requests, frames, and other. I don't actually know what other is, but you know, everything that doesn't fall into any of these things um, will then be listed here. Fortunately, that the column is mostly empty. And then when you go down that table, you will see all the host names. All the host names that stuff.co.nz thinks it's important to contact just because you're trying to get some news. And what UMatrix allows you to do, once I turn it on, is basically to say, I want all those yellow things, and I don't want the blue things. Normally it's green and red, but I'm colorblind, so I have a yellow and blue. Otherwise I can't tell them apart. So it's fine for me to, you know, for stuff to contact the first party um, site, which is essentially stuff itself. It kind of needs that to work, right? It's also fine, I'm giving it permission specifically to contact, um, am I? Not yet, okay, I will do that in a minute. I'm not giving it permission to contact this somniture.stuff.co.nz because that has been deemed a tracker by uh, some other people whose resources I'm using. And there's also CSS and images sort of always allowed because some people think that um, it's important that websites look good. So CSS should always be loaded from everywhere and images should always be loaded from everywhere. Now Steve actually mentioned the one by one image. There's also this wonderful thing called web fonts nowadays, yeah? Fonts.googleapis.com, they are so helpful because they are providing us with CSS defined web fonts to make our websites look pretty. And of course, because it's not Google Analytics, nobody would think that Google is actually going to uh, try to use anyone approaching those fonts and sending along refer headers for tracking purposes. Now, I don't know whether they do. I'm not here to talk about whether they do. In some ways, I would like to think that they'd be stupid if they didn't. I mean, their whole business is data, right? But I don't know if they do. So I don't really want, want that to happen either. Let's just, let's just get rid of this. And this is, this is really just a, 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 an easy way to interact. I can click up here and I can revert to the default or I can click here and say I really want to block it completely. You will also notice that at the top left, um, stuff.co.nz is sort of blue highlighted. Now I, can, I can limit all my rules to www.stuff.co.nz. I can limit all my rules to co.nz. That's not very useful. But I can also limit my rules to everything. And here you see the sort of everything, the default rule set of UMatrix comes with a, I do not want frames except for the first party website, because frames are evil. That, that's the UMatrix um, author who decided this. First party should be allowed, that's kind of necessary. I'm just going to change this. I'm gonna say I don't actually want any of this on by default, right? So now I'm gonna click on this lock, which is the way to persist these changes. Let's just see what happens when I load stuff.co.nz again. Oh, that was helpful. Um, before I do that, have a look. Um, there's a lot of ads here, yeah? There's, there's almost like you have to look very carefully to figure out what is content and what is ad. Sometimes when I go and use my mom's computer, well, my mom also has this by now, but someone else's computer and I use the internet, I'm, I'm, I'm not um, you know, normally uh, epileptic and I'm very sorry for people who are, but I. I'm close to getting seizures when I look at all these ads blinking at me because I'm simply no longer used to it. Watch what happens if I reload stuff.co.nz now. I should have reset the data here. Let me quickly try it again. So there you go. No requests whatsoever outside of the domain of stuff.co.nz. That's very helpful. It also looks like Gopher. Fantastic. Well, no, it has images, sorry. So it, it does have images that are being served by the first party, and we'll, we'll all agree that this is not actually great. This is not the superb web experience that we want. But that's okay, because we'll just go back to this UI that we had, and we'll take a look what's happening here. Oh, Martin actually made a mistake, it seems. Or he, he somehow disallowed CSS in general for the stuff.co.nz site, the entire column, and that doesn't make any sense, so let's revert that. And now you'll see that actually first party CSS is gonna be allowed again. Let's try it again. 
Let's try it again. And I can helpfully click the reload button here, leaving this open. And, uh, you know, let me just open this in the background. There you go. You could leave this open. You could sort of like look at the interaction, look at the counters increasing as you reload that website. And hey, it's looking a lot more like stuff.co.nz, except there are no ads. I find this a much nicer experience, to be honest. Now, of course, stuff.co.nz need to be paid, and I'm not trying to make the case here for ad blockers. I don't want to, you to walk out of this and think that ads are bad and, and so on. It is what we currently have to pay journalists through ad revenue, but it doesn't have to be like that. So I don't know if Stuff actually offers this yet, but there are multiple uh, journalist websites out there that allow me to buy subscriptions. And you know, when I, when I want to read what they write and I think their content is good, then oh, here's props. I'm asking all of you to consider to do the same as I do and actually pay for good journalism. Anyway, this is, this is pretty great, isn't it? I mean, uh, we can look again at all the things that I'm blocking, Facebook and Google and Twitter and so on and Akamai and who they all are. They no longer find out anything about what I'm doing. And now, of course, sometimes you actually need these other services, right? Sometimes when you load Airbnb, for instance, and uh, you deny it access to the Google Maps API, then you can look at all these wonderful properties, but you won't ever find out where they are in, you know, Napier. Yeah? I mean, <laughs> I don't know the street names of Napier, but it's really helpful to look at a map in case you're trying to like get something that's central. So you need to allow maps.google.api, but you can do that specifically for that site, and that can be your informed decision to do. Now, further than that, there is also a lot of use in the so-called content delivery networks. And a lot of uh, the JavaScript that is being used to give you a rich web experience nowadays sits on these content delivery networks, for instance, jQuery. And uh, obviously, you need to allow that. If you are unhappy with them potentially tracking you just because you want to load their code from their website, well, there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, Umatrix itself has a couple of additional features. One of them is the spoof, the referrer header, so that the next time you approach any other website, any third-party website, it'll actually appear as if you've just been on their website. Now let, me, let me show you quickly what that means, because essentially that's what happened in the background. So I'm going to remove that filter. Here we go. We went to, um, to some style sheet on some domain. Let me just figure something out where it is. No, that's all resources stuff. Code.nz, I don't want that. Oh, come on, someone help me. Oh, yeah, I blocked it all. That's stupid. <laughs> this, is, this is the lovely uh, um, charm of live demos. So um, let me just quickly allow all scripts and media just for the purpose of getting some data in here. And as you would expect, suddenly we have a whole lot more stuff loading. Okay, stop. Enough. I have everything I want. Where's the stop button? Here we go. Players.brightcov.net. With the refer spoofing of Umatrix turned on, there you go. You may, I'm, I'm telling Brightcov that I've just been to their site. So at least they don't know and they can't enhance their profile about me in terms of finding out the sort of stuff that I like to consume on the website, uh, on, the, on, the, on the web, on the internet. Um, there are a couple of other things you can set. But let me go back to those CDNs. They are useful. And one thing that you can do, of course, is just simply download jQuery and run it locally. Now, if you want to do that with some sort of squid transparent proxy serving certain URLs, you are probably going to end up in some sort of dark place <laughs> and not be very happy with your life. So I offer you. An Squid transparent proxies, it's been more than 10 years, and I'm very happy about that. Yeah. Yes. So I'm very happy to offer you um, something called Decentralize. Decentralize is essentially nothing other than an add-on that is a transparent HTTP proxy with a couple of cached 
standard libraries out there. So you'll find all of the jQuery stuff there. You'll find all of the other JavaScript stuff that is being used out there. And um, so this is enabled. If I now, what's a good website to use? Do they have this? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to forfeit the demo on this one. Um, or we can try. So if, if now I would actually say umatrix, what was that? Well, that's a fantastic UI interaction. Um, find me some sort of CDN in there that it would have covered. All right, I'm going to give up and not uh, steal your time. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that's actually one that Decentralized has <laughs> imported yet. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think the Google APIs are anything other than Google APIs. Is you know, bear with, I mean, I've done the live demo. I kind of like sort of sacrificed the goats this morning, and it, it, everything worked so far, sort of. Um, let me just assume that you guys understand what I'm talking about. Um, I would now, I would now let's revert these these silly changes here. I would now basically give permission to um, CSE.google.com or or this. Um, which would now mean that Umatrix actually lets this through, but Decentralized would now catch it and would say, is this a resource that I can serve locally? If yes, serve it locally. If no, and then you have a little setting in the Decentralized um, thing, which means block requests for missing resources brings up this big orange banner that says, you, it, this is going to break the web, and it will in some terrible ways because suddenly you can't use your rich Google applications anymore, like Gmail will be broken and, and all these other things. But it is at least an option that you have at your disposal that you can use. At this point in time, I'd like to warn you a little bit because Firefox is, is looks, this, this looks great to me. This looks great. This is like I'm completely in love with this solution and I would love to um, spend a lot of time to actually enhance my privacy and, and make my web experience safer, and also that of all my friends and family. Unfortunately, there is actually no guarantee within Firefox to determine which add-on runs first and then next. So theoretically, Decentralized could be taking all these requests already before Umatrix sees them, or the other way around. You have no way of finding out, and you don't actually, you can't influence it. The Firefox developers are fully aware of this and are not doing anything about it at the moment because they are busy with uh, the, the quantum rewrite and all the web extension stuff. I hope that they are going to approach this at some point in time um, because then, I mean, just imagine, I will only get to see in Umatrix all those requests that Decentralized has not already taken care of and served from local resources, at which point in time I'm no longer trackable. Um, so those are my two favorite uh, extensions. There are a couple more, but I think at this point in time, maybe there's a, a short break in order um, in case anybody has any questions or would like me to repeat something or there are any unclarities. Are they specific to Firefox? No, they are not specific to Firefox. Uh, you will see in my Chromium that there's matrix up here and also decentralized running there. So nowadays, um, especially, I mean, thank you Firefox for the web extensions step that they've taken because that's essentially what they've done. And also Internet Explorer, as far as I'm aware, supports these. I don't know about Safari, but essentially nowadays when you have a good extension like this, you can use it in all your browsers. So that was a fantastic step. Yes? On mobile, they, they run on mobile, yeah. It's a, it's a little bit uh, a different uh, UI experience. Um, so what I, do, what I tend to do is I tend to export the stuff from here and send it to my mobile, import it there. There is no Firefox Sync support yet, but they're working on that. So ideally, at some point in time, you'll sync it with your own server, and then uh, your mobile will have exactly the same tracking preferences or non-tracking preferences as, as uh, you do. Okay. Well, don't use mobile Chrome then. <laughs> um, maybe at this point in time, uh, let me make a quick um, statement about the preferences that sort of the browsers have. 
because there is all this stuff down here in the privacy and security tab um, <coughs> that's relevant to somewhat of what we're doing, right? Um, so accept cookies and uh, accept third-party cookies, and you'll look at these settings and you'll be like, is he nuts? Yeah, I mean, accept all cookies until they expire, accept third-party cookies always, sure. Um, tracking protection, I've turned it off. I mean, I'm using it in private windows because in private windows, actually, the um, apps that I've showed you, the uh, extensions don't work, but I've turned it off. Um, there you go, the do not track signal. I actually had that in the, uh, in the abstract of this talk. Um, send it only when tracking protection is on because I don't really care. I mean, the do not track signal is one of those request headers that I'm sending to Google saying, please don't track me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> again, if I were running a business that makes money out of data, why would I honor that, you know? But that's just me, I don't know what Google does. Um, so I've set these things basically to permit everything. Just let it go because I have a better way of handling it. I don't actually want to just say third party cookies, no. I want to actually be able to say, look, cookies is fine from this side, from this side, but not from this side, not from this side, and I can configure that just as I want it. And then it gets even better, here's the next extension. Cookie auto delete. That extension essentially is supposed to have some sort of way to configure it. Allows me to put specific websites on the gray list or the white list. The gray list means the cookie will stay in the browser until the browser restarts. The white list means the cookie will stay in the browser even across restarts. And anything that's not in the gray list or in the white list is therefore in the black list. And we should get rid of these terms because some people have called them racially problematic and so on, but it's sort of like established. Um, but um, anything that is on the black list will get deleted after a configurable period of time following the close of a tab or navigating away from the browser. So I set that to 15, I didn't set it at all here. This is sort of a test profile, but there you go. I can set it to 15 seconds. And I can set it to 120 seconds or to whatever. Um, and you can do the same with, for instance, local storage. So that when you are done with a website that you needed cookies for, and you leave that website, you do something else, you can actually be sure that this will clean up after the website. And the next time you visit GitHub, three minutes later, you actually have to log in again. I'm sorry, but that's what you asked for. So this is very useful. Um, you know, you have U-Matrix on the one hand with the ability to control who is able to read your cookies in the first place. And then um, those cookies that are to be read or are to be stored get auto-deleted with uh, the extension here. Let's have a look at what else there is. So I mentioned a while ago um, that there is a ton of other features that um, people can use to fingerprint your browser and establish a very unique profile of you. And there's a great um, website called browserleaks.com because it's an, assemb an assembly of all these tests. So, you know, it starts with IP address and the sort of like JavaScript that you support, whether you have a Flash player, Civilite, what sort of fonts you have installed. You have a Java appland. Um, content filters, and of course, these being smart people developing for the web and especially trying to deceive you and cheat you on the web, um, they will have found hacks around all these things. So one hack, for instance, is, hey, I'm going to ask your browser, I would like to draw something on your website, on your canvas. And in order for that to happen, your canvas actually has to, or your browser actually has to provide the important information about the canvas. For instance, what size is it? What's the color depth that I support? And a couple of other things. So canvas fingerprinting is actually about 99.999 and a couple of other nines percent secure way of uniquely identifying you across the web um, in combination with some things like your user agent string and your IP address, and et cetera. So I don't like that. Therefore, there are two wonderful um, extensions here, Audio Context Fingerprint Defender and Canvas Fingerprint Defender which are basically just making sure that 
sometimes my canvas is one pixel bigger, sometimes it's one pixel smaller, sometimes my audio source um, has a different name, and sometimes there's a bit of white uh, noise, sometimes a little bit of green noise, and sometimes a little bit, and so on and so forth, so that the fingerprinting using those techniques is no longer possible. And that's all I need to do. There's actually no configuration going on here. Um, and then finally, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll tell you three other extensions, just quickly mention them, I won't go through them in detail, but there's HTTPS Everywhere, which you should all be using by the EFF, and it makes sure that when there is a website and that you're accessing with plain text HTTP, it actually redirects to the HTTPS, to the SSL secured uh, transport, and stores that information so that next time it happens right away and there's no more uh, plain text leakage happening about your browsing habits. There's this thing called Random UA, which uh, I'm currently hacking on um, together with the author and, and the author of another extension, where the idea should be that um, every single time a user agent string is sent, just randomize it every single time and fuss it up a little. Yeah, I mean, so Internet Explorer, it kind of it's is really bad when you don't report Internet Explorer 10 anymore because there are websites. Hello, Slack. I'm looking at you, um, that will not work when the user agent string reports Internet Explorer 9, God forbid, duck typing is not something that they have heard of. But, um, so I'm just, I'm just adding, you know, the fussing means that I'm actually like surfing with Internet Explorer 96 or something like that and just make it completely uh, uh, unable for people to do the plain analysis of these data. Now, with all of this, what I'm doing here, I'm not suggesting that I leave no traces on the Internet. All I'm, and this is the same with security anywhere. All I am suggesting is that if you actually want to track me, you're going to have to invest a whole lot more money. Essentially, you have to step up your game because that's what I've just done. And the very last um, extension that I can show you tonight, tonight uh, before we hopefully have some time for questions, and I am going to stick around if you want to um, have some more interaction with this, is uh, the multi-account containers. How many of you are actually aware of this feature of Firefox? That's the NZ OSS crowd again, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. So Firefox actually, and I think Chromium as well, um, have the ability to run containers. When, what I mean with a container is your tab running in a container has its completely separate cookie storage, and its completely separate local storage, and its completely separate history, from all the other tabs running in containers, including the default container in your browser. What that means is that you can load Twitter, you can load Facebook, and you can load Google, each in their own container, and leave them there. And that means that you can now actually surf the web without providing logged in account details to Facebook and Google and Twitter for pretty much every single website you visit out there, because those stupid buttons down under every single post asking you to click if you like it or asking you to tweet something, those images are loaded from their servers. And every single time you approach their servers, you're sending along their login cookie. So they know pretty exactly who you are. If this is functionality that a lot of people want and need. And if you don't like the fact that that means that you've become a transparent, trackable person on the internet, then put your proprietary web apps into containers and leave them there. And then you still have most of the convenient, but you'll have a whole lot more privacy. And I think that's all I have to say for tonight. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to field them now or over fears. Fears, good. Yes. You mean this list? Yeah, that Can you it. take a photo? <laughs> yeah, I can. I mean, I can certainly um, just just give you a link list uh, list of links. Yeah, I've been doing other things today. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, and this is just my selection. I did spend somewhat a considerable amount of time on this stuff, um, but there are competitors to these things out there. And in the end, you've got to make it your own. But 
um, and, and there are holes in this. Yeah? There are lots of holes. If you go to browserleaks.com and with all of this enabled and tied down to the point where you can barely use the web anymore, you are still trackable. Just always keep that in mind. Yes? Um, it sounded like decentralized only supports certain things that are sort of right to their repository or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, why can't that be smarter and like know that, I mean, is there a thing that would, you know, like if, if, if you're trying to get, if you're trying to access like web fonts or something like that, would somehow like just magically add that to the things that they, or maybe even you, you could install a squid transparent proxy. Yeah. And <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, and I'm super happy that you asked that question um, because I was wondering if somebody would. Um, I have this pet project of mine, and it's building upon the interplanetary file system. Basically, just, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll try to run you through it in two sentences, yeah? Um, oh, God. Um, we have reproducible builds these days, meaning that the outcome of your build process generates the same thing at all points in time, meaning that it will generate the same hash sum at all points in time. So instead of defining a dependency on jQuery 1.91, why not just depend on that hash sum? Why not just, instead of having jQuery with its 100 functions, why not just depend on that one function? And by the way, this is what the guy with the red nose was talking about, right? Um, at LCA, at the keynote. So this is a fantastic keynote that you could watch. Um, why not index function? Content, content addressable functions. And now add the interplanetary file system, which to everybody who doesn't know that is essentially a completely decentralized peer-to-peer -peer file system using content addressable hashes. So that if I have a certain function from jQuery downloaded, I can broadcast that to everybody in the room. And if anybody in this room wants it and has their priorities set straight, then they'll get it from me. And there's no way that I can interfere with that because hash sum. I mean, OK, I could invest a whole lot of money, but then a lot of other things are going to break on the internet once the SHA-256 thing is finally broken. And it will happen. But by that point in time, we moved on to 384. But it's a good idea. I should yeah. be doing that more often. Yeah. Hi, Tom. Uh, yes. Um, similar to the other tracking discovery website, have you heard of Panoptic Clips on Netflix? Yes. Yes. Um, uh, how does yours fare up to that now that you turned on all your plugins? I don't know. Um, there's there's also a whole lot of other. There's Privacy Badger from the EFF, and then there a couple of other. There's uh, Ghostery is the other one, the other big one. So Ghostery for me is completely out of the question because it's a proprietary yeah. extension. Um, Privacy Badger by the EFF, and I realize I'm digressing, but I'll come back. Privacy Badger by the EFF is sort of like a, I'll learn in the background yeah. what your behaviors are, and that might work really well for a lot of people, and I think it's a great tool for most of the people to install. It's definitely better than not installing any tool, but I'm a deterministic person who likes to understand what's happening, and so Privacy Badger for me is too much machine learning or whatever that's called nowadays. Um, so I, I chose not to use that. And Panopti, that, that thing, Panopti Click, um, I've, I've heard of it. I haven't looked at it. I mean, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on this stuff, but not enough, apparently. Yeah, so the, do you have? Could we do that now? Yeah. Uh, Panopti Click. Google search on oh, bloody Firefox yeah. default. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah, they, they do. Hey, here's a question. So, so to Google something, right, is, is, uh, is in the thesaurus or in the dictionary these days. And so you say, I Googled for that, yeah? For all of those users of DuckDuckGo, do you say I DuckDuckGoed or do you say I DuckDuckWent? <laughs> DuckDuckWent, duck right? Can we have a show of hands? Duck, duck, went. Come on. And duck, duck, goat. Ah, I still win. Yes. All right. I binged it. That's right. I. 
I, I did watch a movie on the plane that did this, and I almost laughed loudly. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, well, sort of says I'm okay, but no. Um, it has a unique fi fingerprint. My browser has a unique fingerprint. Mind you, this is uh, a test profile I set up just for tonight and didn't really configure it. Um, but I will run this privately in my own browser. <laughs> I will not tell you all about it. Without yes, sir. No, I will. I will. I will have had. I will have duck duck wented it. <laughs> Duck, duck, gone. That's it. <laughs> During your research, did you find any uh, extensions or tools that would have actually that actually provided their own hidden data off somewhere else with one tool catching other tools in your tools? Or were most of the tools you were pulling into this actually fairly well thought through? So, so in some ways, I, I think the question was whether I found any tools that would like do secret stuff in the background. And uh, I think in some ways I copped out because I limited myself to open source software, um, thinking you know about that million eyes shallow principle thingy. Um, so that's why Ghostery is just a no-go for me, because uh, I don't know. But I, I have not actually sniffed the wire and tried to figure out what happens, which has become increasingly difficult nowadays, considering that everything is SSL. Uh, um, protected and as far as I know the web extensions actually make this better but before the web extensions were in Firefox you could actually not look into the SSL traffic of an extension in your browser so that was a little bit difficult but my, my theory now is these are all open source tools um, I'll find out about it but I have also spent some time with the code and nothing has you know struck my eye at the moment so the answer is maybe Maybe not. <laughs> yes? We can buy you a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mention the Tor proxy. Uh, um, Have you worn that t-shirt through in April? Yes. Uh, oh, yes. 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 Um, that went perfectly fine. It was Australia. But I, I did, I did, uh, I did sort of, I'm not going to say this, but it starts with SH and ends with IT. Um, my pants, uh, when I realized what I was doing, because I didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> but it's sort of like, it's my conference shirt. I like taking it because it's a, it's a good conversation starter. And then when this after a conference is the last t-shirt that you actually have left to wear for whatever reason, and you get on an airplane, well, whatever. Um, do you, to answer your question, they don't have them anymore, but there are so many people who are interested in this t-shirt that I, you should write to the tour project and simply say, please, can I have the tourist uh, t-shirt? And if enough people do that, the critical mass will be reached. It's funny you say it's a conversation starter because I tend to find tour as a conversation ender. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that sort of tour. I mean, you will note that I haven't actually talked about tour now. <laughs> there is one extension that's really cool, though. And I don't know if, you know, I'm just going to mention it anyway. Um, Foxy Proxy is what it's called. Because it allows you to specify um, URL patterns and then send those URL patterns through your predefined proxies. So I have Tor running on this thing, and I can have an extensible list of URL patterns that will automatically go through Tor, including all of their sub-requests. So that's really, really helpful when, it, uh, when you try to like, not juggle two lives. You know, you're anonymous since you're non-anonymous life. Uh, you can actually, that's the way to get caught, by the way, if your name is dead pirate something. Yeah, because uh, that, but I'm not doing these sort of things. All right. Thank you very much again. <laughs>